What's up guys, it's Phantom Pete here with Baby Is Now. Be sure to check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, as well as subscribe to our YouTube channel so we can show you some love. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to rebuild an atomizer, specifically the IGO L rebuildable atomizer in a single coil setup. Alright, so today specifically I'm going to be rebuilding the IGO L RBA, which stands for Rebuildable Atomizer, on an EVIC right here with a firmware 1.3. So basically, for you guys who don't know about rebuildables, here's what they look inside. You basically build your own wick and coil setup on there. There's no tank on there, uh, specifically on this model, so that means you drip the juice right on there. You drip about three to ten drops and just vape and then refill. Um, and here's the, here's the top piece and the drip tip for it. So today I'm going to be using some pre-built uh, wicks and coils here. They're specifically wrapped for two ohms resistance. Uh, which is about where you want to be ideally. This is what they look like. Um, so let's go ahead and assemble it on here for you. All right, so we stop by removing the top off of here. And on, on the IGOL specifically, there's two little screws on here. You just want to loosen them up a little bit. And just a little bit, just so you can wrap the coil around there. All right, then we take my pre-built coil here. And you just simply wrap it around one of the posts. This part is a little bit hard to show on camera, but you just get it, you get the coil as close as you can to it. Just wrap the first post on there. And this just takes a little bit of trial and error here. Now while I'm doing this here, for you guys that don't know, uh, rebuildables, why, why would you go to rebuildable? Um, you basically, it's the best way to get the flavor out of the juices. Um, you, this way you can rebuild your, your wick and your coil as much as you want, it's pretty cheap. Um, you can get pre-bought strands of this stuff, you know, for a few few bucks essentially, and uh, it just gets way more flavor and way more vapor production out of it. Um, you can customize your builds however you want. Uh, there's a lot of room to play here, and you can't really mess it up. If you burn something now, you just simply, you know, go just get another wick and coil and start building away. So it's a whole different whole different realm. Um, a lot of people that started out vaping started out, you know, with rebuildables and then was gradually uh, evolved into regular cardamizers that you might be using. So that was it right there, if you can uh, see that right there. I basically wrapped each coil two times around the posts and uh, just pretty tight on there. And you don't want the actual uh, uh, the coils touching the post there. And the good thing about, of course, the um, EDIC here is I can test to make sure this is a good connection. I can test the, uh, the ohms on it. Um, even though it's wrapped at two ohms, I mean, you might not always get that depending on how you wrap it, especially if you do a dual coil setup. But uh, pretty easy to check on here. You just pop it right on. Showing 3.3 actually, which is great. That's actually the highest I've gotten it. Um, the higher the ohms, the higher you can run the voltage on there is really all that means. Um, the more wraps you do on the wick, the higher the, the ohms are. Um, there's a few other factors that come into play as far as what uh, gauge wire you use and things like that. But let's just keep it simple. And basically, as long as you get a two ohm uh, pre wrap coil, and put it on here, you wrap it, it'll, it'll get at least two ohms on there, which is good. Um, and after that, after it shows a good resistance on there, you just want to screw it back on. And when you screw it on there, you want to make sure that the actual uh, coils are not touching the posts. All right, yeah, so now, like I said, uh, the ohms are showing at 3.3, which is great. Um, at this point, you don't want to cut anything off yet. You can do a test fire on here. You simply just hold it down. There we go. It's already starting to already starting to dry fire it. Nothing wrong with dry firing. It actually just makes it more rigid on here. And now you simply just cut off these little coils on here, as close to the post as you can get. Uh, a regular pair of scissors works as well. Um, if it sticks out a little bit, that's all right. But you want to get as close as you can to it. And just wrap whatever is remaining around the pole. Go ahead and just tighten the screws all the way down. And once you tighten again, make sure the actual coil is not touching the post. Now with the actual wick, um, there's different ways to do it. Uh, this IGOL has a little bit of a perimeter there, so you can actually wick juice that you overflow from that little reservoir that builds upon there. So I'm gonna leave one end a little bit longer of the wick, just like that. And then pull the other end just a little bit. And this one's just gonna literally just kind of curl around in there just like that, wick it up. 
Then the other end is cut right off as close to the end as possible. Um, this time I wrapped the coils a little bit closer to one of the posts. It really doesn't matter. Um, in fact, that's where I'm going to put in the air hole. As you'll see, that's not actually how you want it. So anyways, there's, there's the single, single coil. rebuild right there for you. You can do dual coils on here, it's going to drop the ohms down. Uh, for dual coils that's how you get the really big rips off of there and the huge clouds, but it's a different experience. Um, I had this regular Igo L just bored out just a little bit um, to give it some more airflow, so it's going to be flowing pretty good. Now when you put the top back on, you want to put it right in front of the coil to get the maximum airflow, so right there. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and put some juice on it. All right, so now that we're done rebuilding the coil, we're gonna go ahead and uh, drop some juice on there and test fire it out for you. All right, so now with the coil built and everything, we're just gonna go ahead and drop some juice on there. This is where you just make sure you wanna saturate the entire wick. Do a nice even coating on there. Um, like I said, this one's actually got a little reservoir in there, so if you over drip, no problem. Um, the other ones, it might leak out a little bit, but not really a big deal. It's just all part of dripping. Especially put like two or three extra drops on the coil there. That's where you mainly want to drip. All right, and then like I said, you want to put the air hole, as you can see there, close to the coil as possible. So it's going to go right there. Snap it right on. Put the drip tip on. Once again, we're going to check the EVIC. It is at 3.3 ohms. That's amazing. Um, so this one, let's just try it at uh, four, four volts here for you. All right, so let's go ahead and do the first rip off the uh, Igo L rebuilt coil here. Immediately working well. I mean, there you go. That's that's the advantage of rebuildables right there. Wick's pretty saturated. We'll just do another drop on here. And like I said, if you've only if you've never tried a rebuildable, um, it's really like going from you know like a low grade cigar up to a mid or high grade, it really just gets more of the flavor out. I mean, it's going to improve the flavors of the juices you already have. Um, this is where if you're getting some high quality juice too, you're really going to actually get, you know, the taste out of it. And with this, with this bigger hole on here, it's going to get a little bit more airflow. You know, there's a million different setups for rebuildables, but like you saw. Just immediately ripping great. That's at 3.3 ohms resistance, which is the highest I've had. I mean, I can take it way up higher. I mean, at this point, it's just personal preference. It's 4.5 volts right here. It's as good as you can get right there. So that's it for you guys, the IGOL rebuild. All right, well, you know what it's time for. It's time for a rip session. Now, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.